हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू टीचिंग पाठशाला टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फर्टिलाइजेशन इन सी आर्चिन एंड दिस टॉपिक वी हैव टेकन फ्रॉम द यूनिट ऑफ डेवलपमेंटल बायोलॉजी इन द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू सॉल्व सम सी एस आई आर नेट क्वेश्चन ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ फर्टिलाइजेशन इन सी आर्चिन दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक फॉर द प्रिपरेशन ऑफ अ सी एस आई आर नेट टिल नाउ वी हैव डन विद द वल्वा फॉर्मेशन इन सी एलियन लेंस फॉर्मेशन इन वॉट बिट्स एंड वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट सम बेसिक पॉइंट्स लाइक द कॉम्पिटेंस एंड इंडक्शन इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो सो इफ यू हैव नॉट सीन दट वीडियो आई विल मैंशन द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बॉक्स एज वेल एज इन द एंड ऑफ दिस वीडियो नाउ लेट्स स्टार्ट दिस वीडियो विद द बेसिक्स रिगार्डिंग द सी आर्चिन दैट वॉट इज सी आर्चिन सो इट इज अ स्पाइनी वाटर एनिमल एंड इट बिलोंग्स टू द फाइलम इकाइनो डरमाटा एंड इट यूज टू लिव इन अ ओशन सो ओवरऑल इफ यू सी दिस figure that is there in front of you there is a spine like structure on the all over the surface of a sea urchin and they are mainly regarded as a water animal that used to live in a uh, large water bodies like ocean and they mainly used to belong from the phylum echinodermata that's why they are also known as a echinoderms so sea urchin are the member of a phylum echinodermata which also include the sea star sea cucumber brittle star and the carinoids so this was the introduction of a sea urchin because i don't know how many of you are familiar with this uh echinoderms and the students who are familiar with this then well and good and the students who are not familiar with this might be it would be helpful for them to understand that what actually a sea urchin is this is again a picture of a sea urchin and it was seems to be interesting for me that's why i have kept this picture in this video so you can see that there is a crab which is attacking the sea urchin and this picture has been taken from the inside of a water body this is again a different picture of the sea urchin and you can see mainly the two different type of a sea urchin one in white color and the second is in i think Uh, orange or the red color now let's come to the main point so this is a diagram of the sperm that is present in sea urchins so uh, it has mainly the basic structure just like the normal sperm so the uh, first area that is represented as a first is having a acrosome and this acrosome is going to have a hydrolytic enzyme that means that enzyme has the ability to digest any layer that is made up of a different type of a biomolecules next the second segment is representing the cell body which contain the pronucleus third portion is representing the collar or neck which is having a mitochondria and that mitochondria will going to help in the production of a atp and that energy will be going to used by this pump for the swimming purpose fourth segment is representing the tail and the speciality of this tail is that this tail will become disintegrated inside the egg after the sperm and egg fusion so the main important point which you have to remember is that the acrosome so this acrosome is mainly present at the tip of the sperm and this acrosome is going to have a different type of a hydrolytic enzyme which is going to play a very important role during the fertilization which we will see in the upcoming slides the next topic is the egg of sea urchin so till now we have seen the structure of a sperm now it's a turn for the egg so if you see the structure the outermost layer is known as the jelly coat or the egg jelly and the nature of this egg jelly is that it used to made up of a sugar and nag nag means i mean the full form of a nag is the n acetyl glucosamine so its nature is mainly made up of a sugar so outermost layer is the jelly coat which is mainly used to believe that it used to help in attracting or activating the sperm the second layer is the vital line membrane the, the area which you can see in the shaded portion so this vital line membrane is equals to the mammalian zona pellucida so the difference between the egg of mammals and the egg of sea urchin is that instead of zona pellucida there is a presence of a vital line membrane in sea urchin so you can say that there is a absence of zona pellucida in sea urchin and instead of zona pellucida there is a presence of a vital line membrane so the function of vital line membrane and zona pellucida is totally equal the innermost double layer is known as the cell membrane envelope and it has the lipid bilayer structure and the most inner uh, most inner part you can see that there is a small small granules present that is known as the cortical granules the main point which you have to remember is that there is the most outer covering that is known as the jelly coat or the egg jelly and the second layer is known as the vital line membrane so this two property are totally unique for the sea urchin as compared to the mammals this is a very basic representation of how the zygote will going to form so egg is going to come from mother which is haploid in nature and the sperm is going to come from father which is again a haploid in nature when there is a combination between the sperm and egg they are going to form a zygote which is diploid in nature because it is representing a 2n n is coming from father and another n is coming from mother and both after the combination is going to form a 2n that is going to give rise to a zygote now this zygote will have a nucleus and the origin of this nucleus will be from both the paternal and the maternal side whereas the cytoplasm of this zygote is going to have a maternal origin because we know that the cytoplasm is mainly cytoplasm and the mitochondria these two organelles we mainly used to get from our mother so they are from the maternal origin 
this is the life cycle of sea urchin that how from a 60 cell stage it is going to grow into a adult sea urchin this is just the additional information as because it is not important for csi net now we are going to see some speciality of sea urchin so initially we are going to talk about the egg so white line membrane have a receptor which is named as a ebr1 okay and this ebr1 has the ability to act as a receptor that means there should be a specific ligand for the ebr1 so you should remember that the position of this ebr1 is on the egg mainly on the white line membrane of egg now let's talk about the speciality of sperm so acrosome have the binding protein which is going to act as a ligand for ebr1 that is present on the white line membrane so first you have to remember the location of this each protein and receptor ebr1 is going to be present on the white line membrane of egg whereas the binding protein that is present inside the acrosome that is going to be present on a sperm okay acrosome of a sperm so this is the two location for the receptor and the ligand when this receptor that is the ebr1 and ligand that is the binding protein come in contact with each other after that the fertilization will going to take place now let's talk about the resect protein so this resect protein is going to act as a chemo attractant and this resect protein is going to be secreted from the egg inside a water and when this chemo attractant will come in contact with sperm at that time it has the ability to activate the sperm in actual the resect is going to act as a sperm activating peptide sperm activating peptide cause the dramatic and the immediate increase in the mitochondrial respiration and the sperm motility the sperm receptor for the resect is a transmembrane protein and when it binds to the resect on the extracellular side a conformational change on the cytoplasmic side activate the receptor's enzyme activity this activates the mitochondrial atp generated apparatus as well as the dynein atpase that stimulate the flagellar movement in the sperm and in this way the sperm get activated in brief you can say that the resect is acting as a sperm activating peptide and this peptide is going to have a location or the receptor on the surface of a sperm on which when this reset is going to bind after that it is going to activate the sperm with some different type of a process the last important point is that fertilization in sea urchin is always a species specific manner and it used to occur inside a water the species specific manner means if you take a egg from a different species of sea urchin and if you take a sperm from the different species of sea urchin at that time if you try to fertilize them they are not going to fertilize each other because they are species specific if you suppose that uh, there is a sea urchin s1 and the sea urchin s2 if you are going to combine the egg and sperm of these two sea urchin they are not going to uh, show a fertilization event okay the egg and the sperm should be from the same species of sea urchin then only there will be the occurrence of fertilization that is why this point is very important because this is a rule of this fertilization in the sea urchin that the egg and the sperm should be from the same species then only there will be the occurrence of a fertilization whatever the points that was mentioned in this slide is very very important and you have to remember because in the upcoming portion you are going to see that there is a lot of question that has been asked on this concept only so try to remember this all point because these points are very unique very easy and very easy to remember also now we are going to talk about the acrosomal reaction so this reaction is very important and you are going to see this reaction when there is a contact of sperm and egg okay so in the previous video when we are studying about the structure of egg we have seen that there is a presence of a outer layer that is known as the jelly coat or the egg jelly you can say anything so this acrosomal reaction is going to digest that egg jelly that is present in the outermost layer of a cell so let's see the reaction one by one the acrosomal reaction in sea urchin is initiated by the contact of sperm with the egg jelly contact with egg jelly causes the exocytosis of the sperm's acrosomal vesicle and the release of proteolytic enzyme can able to digest a jelly part of a egg surface egg jelly that binds to the sperm and allow the calcium to enter into the sperm head the exocytosis of the acrosomal vesicle is caused by the calcium mediated fusion of the acrosomal membrane with the adjacent sperm plasma membrane and this egg jelly factor that have initiated the acrosomal reaction in the sea urchin are very highly species specific so till now we have seen that the calcium mediated exocytosis of different proteolytic enzyme has been taken place now this proteolytic enzyme has the ability to dissolve or to digest the egg jelly okay so whatever the area that has been come in contact with this sperm that area or especially the uh, egg jelly area is going to be digested with the help of this proteolytic enzyme now with the help of the actin molecule that is already present in the acrosome 
with the help of that molecule there will be the exposure or the protrusion of a bindin protein that is present in the acrosome now the bindin protein is going to interact with the ebr1 receptor that is present on the vital line membrane of egg and after that the overall fertilization will going to take place so this all was the acrosomal reaction and the bindin protein that was exposed in the final stage that was known as the acrosomal process this image i have taken from the seventh edition of gilbert now we are going to study about the different steps that are involved in the sea archin fertilization the first step for this fertilization is the release of a chemo attractant and the name of the chemo attractant is the resect protein that used to release from the egg side and this resect protein is going to have a receptor on the surface of a sperm and after binding to the sperm this resect protein has the capability to activate the sperm and after that there will be the contact between the sperm and the egg so the first step was the release of a chemo attractant that is the resect protein from the egg side and the second process or the second step is the contact between the sperm and the egg the third step is the acrosomal reaction in which there is a exocytosis of the sperm acrosomal vesicle that is going to release a enzyme and this enzyme has the ability to dissolve the egg jelly or the outermost jelly coat of a egg the fourth step is the growth of a acrosomal process in which there is a binding of a sperm to the extracellular matrix or you can say that the binding of a sperm to the vital line membrane which is having a ebr1 as a receptor so this will be the species specific recognition and the acrosomal protein that is going to play a important role for this species specific recognition is the bindin protein so there will be the interaction of a bindin protein with the ebr1 receptor that is present on the vital line membrane this binding of bindin and erb1 receptor is going to create a passage for the sperm through this extracellular matrix and finally it will going to lead in the fusion of a egg and sperm cell membrane the last step is the entry of a sperm inside a egg and then there will be the occurrence of a prevention of a polysperming and finally the fertilization will going to take place in the upcoming video we will discuss about the prevention of a polysperming but in this video we are only going to talk about the fertilization event in c uh, c archin i hope the each and every step of this fertilization is now clear the first will be the release of a chemo attractant then there will be the contact between the egg and the uh, sperm then the acrosomal reaction and the growth of the acrosomal process is going to take place finally there will be the binding between the ligand and receptor after that there will be the occurrence of a fusion between the cell membrane of uh, of sperm and the uh, egg and finally there will be the entry of a sperm you have to remember this step in a sequential manner that which step is uh, going to occur at the first and which step is going to occur in the last i have written all the steps that is involved in the sea archin fertilization if you want to read this step you can pause the video and you can go through that although i have already described all the step in the previous slide with the help of the diagram one thing i would like to mention here that in some places i have written the ebr1 in a numerical form and in some places i have written it into the form of a uh, roman numbers okay so this is the ebr1 not the ebri so that you should remember that it is a ebr1 this is a important point regarding the c archin fertilization that you should remember let's go through it so sperm binding does not occur over the entire egg surface there is a limited number of a sperm binding site so this you should remember because it might be a come in a sentence type question that you have to eliminate the wrong statement or you have to pick the correct correct statement so this you should remember that this sperm binding will not going to take place in the overall surface of a egg okay there is a limited number of a sperm binding site on the egg surface the second point is that thus the species specific recognition of a c archin gamete occur at the level of a sperm attraction sperm activation and the sperm adhesion to the egg surface the third point is that bindin protein is going to be present in the acrosome of a sperm and the ebr1 receptor is going to be present on the vital line membrane of a egg the last and the most important point is that the fertilization is always going to take place in a water and this will be in a species specific manner now let's take one question from csir net 2011 june in case of c archin which of the following is the correct sequence of event that is that is to take place during the interaction of a sperm and egg so you have to arrange whatever the option they have given you have to choose the correct arrangement of a event okay so i'm not going to go through all the options because if we know the correct answer there is no need to waste time uh, in other options okay so first we know that there is a secretion of a chemo attractant okay so this is the first step second step we know that there is a contact between the sperm and egg third step is the exocytosis of a sperm acrosomal vesicle that is going to release a different kind of a proteolytic enzyme the fourth step is the binding of a sperm to the extracellular matrix which is also known as a, a vital line membrane in which there will be the interaction of the ebr1 and bindin protein after that 
there will be the creation of a passage for the sperm through which a sperm is going to travel inside a egg and last will be the fusion of a egg and a sperm cell membrane so if we go through all the different options that has been given we can say that the first option is the correct answer which is indicating a sequence like the chemo attraction of a sperm to the egg by a soluble molecule secreted by a egg second process is the exocytosis of a sperm acrosomal vesicle to release its enzyme third process binding of the sperm to the extracellular matrix of the egg fourth process passage of the sperm through the extracellular matrix fifth is the fusion of a egg and sperm cell membrane so this option is totally correct because whatever the sequence they have made it is totally correct it is following the correct sequence event if you see the b option in the uh, second line they have written that after the chemo attraction there will be the occurrence of a binding of a sperm to the extracellular matrix so this option is totally wrong because after the chemo attraction there will be the con uh, contact between the sperm and egg and there will be the occurrence of a acrosomal reaction so uh, this uh, the option b is totally wrong in third option again they have written all the thing in a irregular way the second step again they have told that there will be the binding of a sperm to the extracellular matrix so first of all there will be the occurrence of a acrosomal reaction after that there will be the binding of a sperm to the extracellular matrix and the fourth option is totally wrong because in the second line only they have given that after the chemo attraction there will be the creation of a passage for the sperm through the extracellular matrix so in this way we can easily eliminate the rest of the three option and the correct answer is the option one next question is from csi net 2015 Successful fertilization in sea urchin demands specific interaction between the proteins and the receptor of a sperm and eggs. In view of the above, which one of the following combination is correct? So the first option is the binding in the acrosomes and binding receptor on the egg vital line membrane. So this option is seems to be correct because binding is all, uh, obviously present on the acrosome, whereas the binding receptor that is the EBR one is going to be present in a egg vital line membrane. But somehow we have to eliminate the rest of the option. So let's see. The second option is the binding present in the egg membrane and the binding receptor in a acrosome. So this option is totally wrong. Third option is reset on the egg jelly and the binding on a sperm membrane. So first of all, the species specific recognition will always going to take place due to the binding protein and EBR1 receptor. So there is a no involvement of a reset in the species specific binding. Reset is only used as a chemo attractant to attract the sperm towards the egg. The fourth option is proteasome on a egg membrane. and the complex sugar on this sperm membrane so this is totally wrong because uh, mainly the proteasomes used to present on this sperm which is going to act as a proteolytic enzyme so this option has like no meaning so the correct option is the option 1 that is binding used to present in a acrosome and the binding receptor that is the ebr1 is going to present on the egg vital line membrane with this we have completed the topic of fertilization in sea urchin and in the next video we are going to discuss about the polyspermy prevention in the sea urchin So you can share this video with your friends who are preparing for the CSI NET exam and along with that if you are new to my channel you can subscribe my channel for getting more different videos on CSI NET gate and many more different life science examination and along with that don't forget to hit the bell icon so that you will be notified with my each and every new video uploads thank you